Good morning, students of class 10. I am your subject teacher of biology, Ms. Shonali Banerjee. Children, you all are aware of the tough time we all are going through. But due to this, let us not waste our precious time and concentrate on our studies. Today, we will start our biology classes through these video lessons. Our first chapter will be Chapter 2, Structure of Chromosomes, Cell Cycle and Cell Division. So, let's get started. Here, in this current slide, you can see I have written what are chromosomes. But before starting on knowing about chromosomes, first I want to remind you that what we studied in class 9. I hope you remember the first chapter was related to cell the unit of life. And there you studied a specific cell organelle called nucleus. And inside that nucleus are present the chromosomes or more specifically the chromatin fibers. And these chromatin fibers are formed of what? It's DNA. And what is the full form of DNA? Deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, to understand about chromosomes, let us first read what is given in the slide. The nucleus contains most of the cell's DNA, which is organized into individually separate and discrete or distinct units called chromosome. What does this mean? You know that the DNA is present in which part of the cell? It's the nucleus. And this DNA is actually placed in the form of chromosomes. Chromosomes are highly coiled and condensed chromatin fibers. Now here you are getting two terms. In the second point you are getting two terms. Chromosomes and chromatin fibers. Now, what is the difference between this chroma, uh, chromosomes and chromatin fibers? You need to understand this first. Now, see in this diagram B. Can you see some threads? This is the nucleus, okay? This is not the full cell. Only the structure of the uh, nucleus is shown here. And you can see here that here some thread-like structures are seen, isn't it? These thread-like structures are called the chromatin or chromatin fibers. When the cell is not dividing, the chromatin occurs in the form of threads. And when the cell needs to divide, these chromatin fibers condense into chromosomes, which you can see in the diagram C. Can you see these uh, X-like uh, structure? These are the chromosomes. That is, they become highly coiled and condensed. That's why chromosomes are what? Highly coiled and condensed chromatin fibers. Clear? Now, the next point. When a cell is not dividing, the chromatin appears to be in the form of long and thin threads. Okay? That I told you just now. But when a cell prepares to divide, the chromatin fibers coil and condense to form chromosomes. Okay, see in diagram A. Can you see here DNA is shown? This DNA is in the form of threads when the cell is not dividing. But when the cell starts dividing, can you see this chromosome is formed? Means this chromatin threads get condensed into this chromosome form when the cell wants to divide. And this, these chromosomes were discovered by Walther Fleming in 1882. Let us go to the next slide.
Now let us see in this slide that what is chromatin all about or how is chromatin made up of? What, are the com what is the composition of chromatin? Chromatin material which forms the fibers that is chromatin fibers is formed of two substances. What are they? First is DNA and the second is histones. DNA I hope all of you are aware of that it is deoxyribonucleic acid which is about 40 percent and histones it is a type of protein it is about 60 percent. Now how does this DNA or what is the molecular structure of DNA? We will see that. First we will see that who studied DNA and that was Rosalind Franklin in 1953. The double stranded helical structure of DNA was given by James D. Watson and Francis Crick. Now children one thing be very uh, means sure of questions come regarding these two points it is first studied and who gave the double stranded helical structure. Remember first studied by Rosalind Franklin but if you are asked that who discovered the double helical structure of DNA? It was James Watson and Francis Crick. Now what do you mean by helical structure? Means it is in the form of helix. Helix means have you seen a spiral staircase? How it looks like? It coils uh, uh, upon each other. The, the two sides, two railings coil upon each other but they don't uh, cross each other. They don't intersect each other. They are parallel to each other. Similar is the helical structure. A single molecule is very large and hence DNA is considered as a macromolecule. You can see here in this diagram which I have shown in this slide that here the two strands of DNA. You can see the two strands here. Here this is the one light blue colored and the dark blue one. Can you see? These are the two strands and they here you can see an intersection but actually that is not an intersection. They are coiling upon one another without intersecting like the staircase, the staircase which we see they coil around each other without intersecting, okay. Now let us start with the second slide of chromatin again. Children please sit with your books, it will be much easier for you though I have given all the diagrams, then also please sit with your books, okay. Now what I told in the previous slide was that this DNA is a macromolecule because it is very large. Now what this is DNA is composed of, okay. So it is composed of two complementary strands wound around each other in a double helix. First two complementary strands. I told you what are the two complementary strands. One, the, one was in the blue color and one is the dark blue color. The two uh, strands are wound around each other not intersecting with each other, okay, in the form of a double helix and complementary strands that I will explain just after 2 minutes. So let me complete this part and then I will explain that. Now each single DNA strand is composed of repeating nucleotides. Okay. Now DNA is formed or the units of DNA are actually nucleotides. What do you mean by these nucleotides? Nucleotide is made up of three components, the phosphate, the sugar, and nitrogenous bases. Now see here in this diagram at the bottom you can see I have drawn or is a present the diagram of a nucleotide. See the sugar is there S, P is for phosphate group and C means here uh, this nitrogenous base is C which you will come to understand when we go through the chapter. So this one is the nitrogenous base. This is the sugar and this is the phosphate. So this whole thing is called the nucleotide. Questions are given what does nucleotide composed, compose of or what is nucleotide composed of? So phosphate, sugar and a nitrogenous base. Now there are four types of nitrogenous bases means this nitrogenous base which you can see in the nucleotide, this can be a four types. What are they? They can be adenine which is represented by A, guanine which can be represented by G, cytosine which can be represented by C and thymine which is represented by T. Okay. 
So, what we see that nucleotide is composed of three components. What are they? Phosphate, sugar, nitrogenous base. Out of which phosphate and sugar does not have any subdivisions in DNA. Okay, In DNA, there are no subdivisions. But nitrogenous base can be interchangeably present. It can be either adenine, it can be guanine, it can be cytosine and it can be thymine. Now, one thing which is very important I am going to tell you, remember and listen very carefully. We talked about complementary strands. What does this complementary mean? Complementary means adenine always pairs with thymine and guanine always pairs with cytosine. It cannot happen that adenine will pair with guanine or cytosine. Adenine will always pair with thymine and guanine will always pair with cytosine. See in the next point, this point I have written, A pairs with T and G pairs with C. I think you know the abbreviations of A, T and G, C. I have told you earlier. See, adenine pairs with T and guanine pairs with C. Now, you must be thinking, why ma'am has put here two uh, uh, lines and here three lines? So, that is adenine pairs with thymine with two hydrogen bonds and guanine pairs with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. You can also write, as I have written here, A pairs with T. You can also write T pairs with A. Here, I have written G pairs with C. You can also write C pairs with three hydrogen bonds with G. But not, you cannot write what? That A cannot pair with G or C. It will only pair with T. And G pairs with C and not with any other nitrogenous base. So, this point, fourth point of this slide is actually complementarity of the base pairs. Okay. Now, we come to the next part of chromatin that is histone. Here, these proteins help in coiling and packaging of the DNA into structural units called nucleosomes. What are these histone proteins and what is the work of this histone protein? It helps in coiling and packing of DNA. Into which units? These units are called the nucleosomes. This point will be more clear when we go to the next slide. One thing very important let me show in this diagram alongside. Here you can see A, A, A is paired with T. That is adenine is pairing with thymine with two hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds is written. And G is pairing with C with three hydrogen bonds. Okay. This this pairing is known as base pair pairing. These are base pairs. And uh, here you can see the phosphate and the sugar at, in the sides, on both the sides, sugar and phosphate. So, remember sugar and phosphate forms the backbone of the DNA and this nitrogenous bases, they form the inward part or the middle part. If you consider this DNA as uh, or Imagine this DNA as a ladder, these phosphate and sugar form the sides of the ladder and these nitrogenous bases form the rungs of the ladder. Is it clear now? Okay, let us, move, let us now move to the next slide, okay. Children, in the previous slide, we started with histone pro proteins, isn't it? Now, I told you that histones are proteins that help in coiling and packaging of DNA, okay. Now, why this packaging is required? First, understand that. Why in our cell, the DNA has to get packed or coiled? Why it cannot remain free and normal as threads? Why it uh, needs to remain packed? This is because, think, our DNA, a human cell, if we consider a human cell, a human cell has 2 meters of DNA. Can you imagine 2 meters of DNA? If we stretch this DNA end to end, it is nearly 2 meters. Now, if and our nucleus size is nearly 6 mu m. Mu m, I, all, uh, I think all of you know, is micrometers. And anything related to um, cell is measured in micrometers. And 1 micrometer is equal to 0 0.001 millimeters. Okay. 
0.001 millimeters. So our size of the nucleus is only 0.006 millimeters. And imagine this 2 meter of DNA in each cell has to get packed inside that. Now for this packing, what our cell has, what way our cell has adopted? The DNA strands winds around a core of 8 histone proteins which is known as histone octamer. Each such complex is called a nucleosome. Can you see this first diagram which is written A? In this, can you see these round ball like things? These are the histone proteins and this one complex is known as a histone octamer, this one complex. And it has 8 histone proteins. Uh, from the front you can see 1, 2, 3, 4. And can you see at the back 1, 2, 3 and 1 his here. So total in one complex there are 8 histone proteins. And if, can you see this uh, uh, DNA are bound uh, with this uh, histone proteins? And this bound, uh, bounding or binding of this uh, uh, DNA around this histone proteins and this complex is known as a nucleosome. Can you see this diagram? This full thing that is the histone octamer that is 8 histone proteins along with the bounded DNA is known as the nucleosome. This also sometimes comes in the question that is name the unit which consists of the histone proteins around which the DNA is bound. Okay, So this is called the nucleosome and these nucleosomes can be present in millions in a single uh, means chromosome. In a single chromosome, a million of nu nucleosomes can be found. Now, what is the utility of uh, these uh, structures? That it helps in making the DNA shorter because it will coil around these nucleosomes and it gives stability to the uh, DNA or to the chromosomes rather and also decreases the space, requires less space to accommodate inside the nucleus. Okay. So, each human cell contains approximately 2 meters of DNA if stretched end to end. And this big uh, means DNA has to get uh, means adjusted into the nucleus. And hence, this packing is required in the form of nucleosomes. Can you see here this DNA in the sec uh, second diagram B? This DNA is here. It gets packed or it gets coiled around this histone. See, and this coil around the histone proteins, this forms the ultimately the chromosome here. Okay, so this is all about the chromatin. Okay, now this slide you see the heading is structure of chromosomes. In the second slide, we saw the structure of means or the, about chromosomes, we learned about chromosomes, but you need to understand what does a chromosome look like or what is their structure and form. So, each chromosome consists of two chromatids joined at some point. It is written some point. I will explain this why some point. Along the length, along the length. Now, see, this is a, in the, uh, see in the figure B. This is a fu full chromosome. I told you it looks X-shaped. This is a full chromosome. Okay. And here, one more term you are getting that is chromatids. So, what is the difference between a chromosome and a chromatid? Earlier, we saw what? What is the difference between a chrom chromatin fiber or chromatin and chromosome? Okay. Here, we are seeing what is chromosome and chromatids. Now, in this diagram B, you can see this is a chromosome. And can you see here it is marked chromatid? Now, come to figure A. Here in this diagram you can see in this X, one side is yellow in color, one side is blue in color. This one half a uh, line has been drawn, a uh, straight line to divide the uh, chromosome into two halves. This part on one side, yellow part is one chromatid and the other one on this side that is the blue side is another chromatid. So one chromosome is generally made up of two chromatids. I think uh, the difference between chromosome and chromatid is understood. Okay. Now, the point of attachment where the two chromatids are joined is called the centromere. Now, this is yellow one is one chromatid and this whole yellow one. Okay. And the this blue part is another chromatid. These two are joined around this middle portion in this chromosome 
which uh, which is known as the centromere this point of attachment of the two chromatids is known as the centromere and this uh, can you see this part where the centromere is present it appears to be uh, a little bit little bit con constricted okay so the place where centromere is present is a bit constricted part centromere what is the function of centromere centromere also serves to attach the spindle fibers during cell division now you must be thinking what is spindle fibers that's why i have given these two diagrams c and d can you see this c diagram can you see the chromosomes here in between this will be more clear when we go to cell division for the time being and make let me make you understand these spindle fibers can you see the chromosomes in uh, figure b sorry figure uh, c these x shaped chromosomes are placed in one line and this placement can only be possible due to the presence of these yellow lines can you see these yellow lines okay and these spindle fibers these are all actually spindle fibers and these spindle fibers appears only during cell division now the centromere also serves to attach the spindle fibers during cell uh, division now one more thing is written in your book is that as the spindle fibers contract these spindle fibers yellow colored lines in uh, figure c you can see these also contract okay when they contract the sister chromatid sister chromatid means this in figure a this yellow side is one chromatid and these this and a blue side is one chromatid i told you so these two are sister chromatids okay yellow one is uh, one chromatid and the uh, blue one is another so these two are sister chromatids so as the spindle fiber contracts the sister chromatids are separated at the centromere means from this centromere they detach and the blue one is separated to one side and the yellow one is separated to one side see here in the uh, diagram d can you see the spindle fiber is attaching uh, with the this uh, chromatids each side and they are halved from between and they move towards the opposite poles poles means this is one pole and this is the other pole okay in this uh, diagram d also this is one pole and this is the other pole this will be more clear when we go through the cell division chapter okay let let us now go to the, the next slide okay children this slide which i am showing you is not given in your book okay but sometimes i have seen questions are being asked from here that's why i am giving this extra part or uh, I means teaching you this extra part you remember in the previous slide i told you when i was talking about the definition of uh, uh, centromere i told you that the two chromatids are joined at some point some point i was stressing on some point along the length okay so that some point why i told some point because see according to the placement you the, in this diagram in this slide you can see a red mark in all the chromosomes can you see these are all centromeres okay now in all the types of chromosomes you can see that the centromere is placed in different places isn't it now according to the placement or position of the centromere the chromosomes are divided into four types different types according to the position of the centromere the first one is called the metacentric why here it is placed in between the length of the chromosome dividing both into nearly equal halves Uh, both the sides into nearly equal halves metacentric it is sub metacentric it is little bit uh, not in the middle little bit towards one side making one arm one side of the arms shorter and the other one longer it is sub metacentric next one you can see it has gone far beyond sub metacentric position and it has gone gone more towards one side making one arm much much more shorter and the other arm very longer this is acrocentric and the last one you can see it has gone to the tip make no other uh, means the other arm is not there on the other side of the centromere and the two arms on the other side are very big can you see so we have four types of chromosomes according to the relative position of the centromere it is metacentric sub metacentric acrocentric and telocentric okay and children uh, go through these diagrams very importantly because if you for example cannot explain what you want to write if you draw these diagrams also the teacher will understand that you have the concept clear okay children 
Now, a very important topic which you have heard always of this term, which we'll uh, be going through, which is genes, which is G E N E S. Mark the spelling, okay? Genes. Now, you have heard many times about genes, but you don't know what genes are, okay? Now, the genes are specific sequences of nucleotides. I hope you remember what is nucleotide. Nucleotides are composed of three things. What are they? Remember, phosphate, sugar and a nitrogenous base. Okay. So, genes are specific sequences of nucleotides on a chromosome. Okay. That encode particular proteins. That encode particular proteins which express in the form of some particular feature of the body. Now, listen very, very carefully. These genes are actually specific sequences of nucleotides. Can you see this first diagram, which I have not marked, just beside the gene I have uh, given this diagram. Can you see here, this is actually what? These uh, double helical structure, double stranded helical structure, which you can see here, here. This is DNA. A part of the DNA forms a gene. Okay. A part of the DNA only consists of a gene. Now, you know that DNA is made up of what? Ultimately what? Single unit are nucleotides. So, specific sequences of nucleotides. Clear? On a chromosome. On a chromosome means DNA only will coil to form a chromosome ultimately. Can you see in this diagram? The DNA is only coiling, super coiling. Okay? And forming this chromosome. So, genes are specific sequences of nucleotides on a chromosome that encode particular proteins okay now what does this mean that encode particular proteins means you know that these genes we get from our parents isn't it from the from our father and mother but presence of this gene will not give you a character for example your mother has straight hair and your father has curly hair so you get the gene of your father and mother both but only one of the genes for hair, type of hair, will be expressed. And that, only the presence of that gene will not give you the character. That gene first goes from our parents into our body. Okay? Into all the cells. And they, that gene now, when present in our body, gives or makes a particular protein. First, those genes code for a particular protein. For example... You know that if I uh, tell a code C A T, what does the code mean? Cat, C A T cat, we know a furry animal which has uh, grayish eyes and is of the family of a tiger, isn't it? So that is the code for cat, C A T cat. Now, encode a particular protein means particular genes form particular proteins. They code for particular proteins. Means all genes will not be forming the same type of protein. Some genes form different type of proteins that those proteins differ. So a particular gene when present in your body first will form a protein and when that particular protein is formed in your body will express in the form of some particular feature in your body. Is it clear? So genes when present in your body or in your cells encode particular proteins first give rise to particular proteins and those proteins will give a particular feature in the body okay now these genes are considered as units of heredity why her units of heredity what does heredity mean heredity means when something we get from our parents that is something is transmitted from our parents to ourselves that is transmission of characters or anything from parents to offspring that is genes are transferred from parents to offspring okay that's why we get particular characters because our parents gave us those genes okay hopefully it is clear can you see in this uh, diagram a here also dna is shown and uh, these yellow colored um, lines are actually the backbones that is phosphate and sugar and can you see this t a a t all these g c written these are the nitrogenous bases that is the rungs of the ladder from here to here is forming one gene so this will code for a character genes contain instructions for making proteins proteins then give us a character this dna then supercoils to form a 
chromosome and this chromosome formation remember always occurs during cell division otherwise these chromosomes are not formed they remain in chromatin fiber form in thread like form only during cell division these form the this chromosome structure okay in this diagram also in the diagram b also you can see that the cells chromosome is shown here enlarged and shown here and here the dna this guanine cytosine adenine thymine all are uh, here which this part of the dna is forming the gene which gets supercoiled by the formation of nucleosomes and then form the chromosome okay children this is all for this lesson or this class i'll be back soon with a new video for you all go through the lesson very carefully because this is a very new chapter and very new terms are given all the terms are very new listen to the class very carefully and sit with a book go through it repeatedly then you will understand the differences i have mentioned all the differences okay thank you